Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today in this episode of VIT Triple E Questions with Solution, we are going to be looking at some previous year questions which were asked in chemistry in VIT Triple E. So today we're going to be looking at questions asked on the chapter P, D, and F block elements. So these refer to the P block elements, the D block elements, and the F block elements in the periodic table. So this is a part of an organic chemistry. And today we're going to be looking at some questions of these, this chapter which was asked in the year 2018. So here comes our first question. The radius of LA3+, plus, the atomic number of lanthanum is 57, is 1.06, is 1.06, Angstrom, which one of the following given values will be closest to the radius of the element lutetium? And this is the ion, basically lutetium 3 plus. And we know that the atomic number of lutetium is 71. Well, we have four values here, 1.4 angstroms, 1.06 angstroms, 0.85 angstroms, 1.6 angstroms. So, which of these is the correct option? In order to, you know, get into the answer, we need to understand which are the, where do the elements lanthanum and lutetium come in? Well, lanthanum is the element just before the series of, you know, F block elements called as lanthanoids and lutetium is also present in the lanthanoids section. So therefore, lanthanum and lutetium are lanthanoids. Well, what is so unique about that? Well, the thing is, there is a phenomenon known as lanthanoid con contraction. So due to lanthanoid contraction, the size of the lanthanoids, you know, it decreases, the size decreases as we move along the period. And here we're asked to compare, we are asked to find the atomic radius of lutetium. So lutetium is the last element of the lanthanoids. It's after lanthanum, cerium, praseodymium, neodymium, promethium, samarium, europium, gadolinium, terbium, and then a couple of other elements. So then after in the final part of lanthanoids. So lutetium is the final element among the lanthanoids section. So therefore, it will be the smallest among lanthanoids. And not only that, the form given here is a positive ion. And the positive ion usually is smaller than the atom of that same element. So therefore, from these, you know, deductions, what we can get is that the value of the radius of lutetium will be lesser than 1.06 angstroms. And among the four options, there is only one option which is less than 1.06 angstroms. It is option C, 0.85 angstroms. So therefore, 0.85 angstroms is the correct option for this question which was asked in 2018. All the other values are greater than or equal to LA3+. And since we are dealing with lanthanoid contraction, the radius of lutetium has to be less than 1.06 angstroms. So option C is the correct option. Now, let's look at another question. In the case of nitrogen, nitrogen trichloride is possible, but not nitrogen pentachloride. While in the case of phosphorus, PCL3, that is phosphorus trichloride, as well as phosphorus pentachloride, are possible. Now, what is the reason d for this anomaly? Is it A, available of vacant d orbitals in P but not in N, B, lower electronegativity of P than N, C, lower tendency of H bond formation in P than N, and or D, occurrence of P in solid while N in gaseous is in gaseous state at room temperature? 
Well, the all of these, you know, statements are true. For nitrogen, it has seven electrons in its valence shell, so its configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. And for phosphorus, it's 15. So therefore, you have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. And since we already have a third shell, 3d will be equal. 3d will have zero electrons. Now, if you want to achieve pentachloride, if you want to form a pentachloride, you need to have availability of vacant d orbitals because you know you have five, you know, chlorine atoms to bond with, and and so therefore you must have one, you must have the electrons required to form the amount of chlorine, the amount possible, or you should have vacant orbitals where the, you know, where the chlorine atoms can form coordinate bonds. So therefore, in this case, in nitrogen's case, it's, it only has until the second shell, and the d orbital begins from the third shell. So therefore, availability of vacant, vacant d orbitals in P but not in N will be the correct answer because without the d orbit the vacant orbital you cannot form ncl5 because well there are, there are not enough electrons and also there are not there is not enough space to fit in two more chlorine atoms that's why option a availability of vacant d orbitals in p but not in n is the correct option lower electronegativity means that it will be less reactive but then that is that does not impact here that that is not the correct reason here lower tendency of h bond formation we're talking about halogens so again this is incorrect occurrence of p in solid state while n is in gaseous state at room temperature again that is due to physical properties so option d is incorrect the right option is option a availability of vacant d orbitals in p but not in n and this is because nitrogen's configuration ends in the second shell while phosphorus is you know, configuration and ends in the third shell. And in the third shell, you have d orbitals, whether they're filled or vacant. Now, let's look at the final question of this episode. In XEF2, XEF4, and XEF6, the number of lone pairs on xenon are respectively 231, 123, 412, 321. Which of these is correct? Well, the first thing to note is that xenon is a noble gas. It's an inert element, and noble gases have eight electrons in the outer shell. So that means, you know, there are a lot of bond lone pairs, bond pairs possible on xenon if it's reactive, but then, you know, eight electrons in outer shell means that the element has completed its octet for the valence shell, so therefore they are, are not usually reactive. Some elements are possible, and these are some of them, XCF2, XCF4, and XCF6. So you have xenon, and you have two fluorine atoms trying to bond with it, so they form this structure. So two of the, you know, Lone, two of the electrons of xenon are used up in forming the bond pairs. You still have three lone pairs left. So here's a pair of lone electrons. Here's another, here's another. So you have three of those in XCF2. Similarly, if you were talking about XCF4, you will be having xenon and then four fluorine atoms f f actually the structure is something like this it's f f f f and you have four electrons which are left out so they form two lone pairs so therefore xcf4 obtains this structure so it has two lone pairs and finally, if you're talking about XCF6, here's xenon, 
Now you have F, 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 and then finally another F. But we can, you know, write it as Q towards one side because you have a lone pair of electrons still left out. So therefore, there's only one lone pair left, so you have one lone pair. We can draw that. So therefore, the correct option for this question is option D, three, two, one, respectively. So XCF2 has three lone pairs, as we have just as we have drawn out. For XCF4, you have two lone pairs, and for XCF6, you have just one lone pair. So therefore, option D is the correct option for this question, which was asked in 2018. That concludes this episode of BITEEE Questions with Solution. If you want to access more of our videos, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. You can always get the latest updates by hitting the notifications button in, below the video. If you want to access more of our video syllabus, then don't forget to hit the link for the playlist in the description box down below. And Finally, if you have suggestions regarding how to improve our content, then don't forget to type them down in the comment section down below. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.